In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the correct way to open a text file and not just a text file. We're going to be looking at how we can open any stream of data in a safe way because there is a clean way to do this. And unfortunately, a lot of tutorials still don't use this. So I just want to clarify the correct and the safe way to open a text file and most files in any case. So let's go ahead and create a main.py file where we can execute our code. And for the first example, I'm just going to go over the easiest way to open a file. And we're just going to use a name is equal to main check to achieve this. And this is something I've seen happen quite a lot in a lot of projects. And it kind of makes me cringe but this is how it goes. So first you go ahead and create a try block and then we want to go ahead and open a file such as text.text. .text. So you would create a variable that opens it up and inside here you would insert the text.text .text. and of course you would pick the method on whether you want to read or write with this file or do both. And for this example we're just going to read from it. So this takes care of the operation of actually opening the text.text .text file or any file in that case. And if we want to use that now, all we have to do is refer to it and say, we want to read the first line, for example, and that will be that. Now, in case there's an exception, we will just handle it inside here. We'll say accept exception as E. And usually you would never want to create such a broad exception, but for this example, it's perfectly fine. We're just going to go ahead and print whatever happens. And finally, no matter what happens, we want to make sure that we close the stream. So here we'll go ahead and call f.close. And this is going to give us a small error because there's a chance that this might not be created if the try block fails before that point. So we're going to get this small warning. But if we go ahead and print this the way it is, we're going to get this is text A printed inside the console because it successfully was able to read text.text .text and it didn't trigger any errors and it was also able to close the file. And maybe it would be better if I go ahead and say print file closed. So now if we run that, we'll see that the file was, was also handled correctly when it comes to closing the file. So we don't have any memory leaks or anything going wrong there. And generally speaking, there's not really anything wrong with this approach other than that this syntax is extremely unpleasant to look at and that you need to keep into account that you always have to call f.close or file.close. You need to keep track of the file as long as you use it and when you're done with it to avoid memory leaks, you need to go ahead and close this file. And this is a very unpleasant approach, especially since we live in the future, which means we have some very nice sugar syntax to achieve this same block of code. So right below that, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this the correct way to open another file. So we're still going to use the try block because that is necessary to catch errors no matter what you do. But this time we're going to use the with keyword. And this is something that a lot of beginners and a lot of tutorials for some reason tend to skip on because they read some really old documentation or they learned from someone who had no idea what they were doing. So it's very important we stick with this with keyword because we will still get the same function from opening the file, except we're going to shorten the code and we're going to make it much more safe. So inside here, we want to open the file and we need to specify a file. And since this is not a function, I'm just going to pass in text underscore to dot text in read mode as file. So we create the variable as we open it. And then we can go ahead and use that however we like. So we can say file dot read line and we're going to print whatever the content is in that file. And that's all it takes to use this line of code. Of course, we still need to accept the exception as E or whatever exception you're expecting to get and print it out here. But this was a lot more clean than the first version. As you can see here, we reduced the code almost by half. And not only is it more clean, it is much easier to read and it prevents us from having to manually close the file when we are done with it. The with block makes sure that all the operations that happen inside it are safely opened and safely closed. If there is an error inside here, it's going to throw the exception and it's going to close the file. Everything's done automatically, so we don't have to worry about anything that's happening inside the with block. And it's important we keep account of this behavior because since it's automatic, that's something we don't really have to worry about, making sure that we concentrate on other bugs that can potentially happen. If we forget about closing this file, we might have some memory leaks and that can really create a disaster in our program if we have a bigger project. But with the with keyword, 
we avoid any potential of doing that error. And if we run this program, we're going to get this is text V opened. And in case there's an error, it's going to handle that error just by calling the accept block. So as you can see here, instead of typing text, I wrote .tet and it said no such file or directory. And we can try to do the same thing with the first version. So inside here, we're going to type in .ext and that doesn't exist either. But here's something interesting about what happens there. Inside here, we try to open the file, but since it doesn't open a file, for some reason, it doesn't create the variable in the try block, which means in the finally block, we're creating a variable that doesn't exist. So theoretically, we would also have to try inside here to close the file if we want to avoid an error. So to cut this short, it's just a huge mess if you decide to do this all manually. And this isn't something extremely new. If I remember correctly, it was introduced more than 10 years ago. So it's something you definitely should be doing if you are not doing it yet. And as a bonus, I'm going to throw in a quick trick on how you can open two files at once with one line of code. So let's go ahead and remove the syntax that I never want to see again. And inside here, we're going to fix the text underscore two. So we have with open text underscore two as file. And if we want to open another file, we just go ahead, open text dot text in read mode as file one. And just by doing that, we are now able to refer to both of these files in only one line of code. So here we can go ahead and type in file one dot read line. And when we run this program, we're going to get this is text B and this is text A. And we've successfully read from both of these files and closed them correctly. But with that being said, guys, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.